So guys, today I just want to show you how I painted up all these Bjornings. They are absolutely incredible models. I really enjoyed painting these. You know, Forge World always seems to knock it out of the park with their sculpts. Their resin is much nicer to use compared to the old GW Finecast. I don't know why they don't just share the recipe, but hey ho. So when I'm starting a project, I like to think, what is going to be the biggest influence on what my base coat is going to be for the miniature? And um, because Bionings have kind of a lot of blacks and browns and stuff, I'm going to start from a brown base coat, as you can see here. So this Bioning here has been painted with Hydrax Brown from Colorforge. I absolutely love the Colorforge stuff these days. I'm really loving it. This one's dried a little bit glossier than usual. Normally Colorforge is really matte, but um, as we're going to be painting over pretty much everything, there's absolutely no issue with the kind of satin finish we have here. When I paint a project, I want to get it done as fast as possible. So I'm going to be starting from all the browns, and that means I can give all the brown areas a wash in the same colour at the same time. So the first thing I'm going to do is all the different armbands, the belts, the wee bags, these kind of things on the... Is it gaiters? I can't I don't know what they're called. Around the shoes. And to do that, I'm going to be using Doom Bull Brown. So without further ado, let's get started. So when using the Doom Bull Brown here, we don't really need to be that tidy, but I'm going to be anyway. As this is the first layer, if we make any mistakes, it doesn't really matter at all, because we'll be going over it with other colours anyway, further down the line. However, before I painted any more of the miniature, my brand new cutting mat arrived. How excited am I? I thought it was finally time to upgrade my cutting mat to a size that actually fits my workspace and oh my god, it's an absolute game changer. I'm absolutely loving it. I'm hoping it'll look much better in the background on the camera as it's not covered in hundreds of shite. Anyway, next up I'm going to do an XV88 on the jacket. You'll see here that for some reason my XV88 has become really watered down so I actually had to do two thin coats, not out of choice. At this stage we are now finished all the browns that I'm going to do. It is optional but you could do all the axe handles a different colour of brown as well but I was quite happy to leave it as the Hydrax base coat layer. This is one of my favourite steps is covering everything in Agrax. I just think it makes the miniature look fantastic. It really starts to make the miniature look a bit more lifelike. All we need to do is pray that it doesn't dry glossy. While the Agrax dries I thought I'd use this opportunity to paint all the axe heads and any metallics in a lead belcher before giving it a quick wash of milne oil. Now before we do any other base layers I want to do a dry brush on the coat. This is so that when the dry brush inevitably goes over other parts of the miniature I can just cover it over with the next layers of paint. I just mix some flayed one flesh into the XV88 and then give an even lighter dry brush of just flayed one flesh, but this is really, really light, only to get the final edges. And as you can see from this little photo here, I think this really does make the jacket stand out and look incredible with all the different edge highlighting. I would never have the patience these days to edge highlight all these individual bits on the jacket, especially across 20 plus models. So I am always going to go with the easy dry brush method. Now, next up, I am about to completely contradict myself and edge highlight the trousers with Word Bearers Red. The reason I'm contradicting myself here and going with the edge highlight is because the trousers are quite hard to get to with a dry brush and I would inevitably accidentally go over the coat. The folds in the trousers are also much more prominent and easier to edge highlight than the individual little strands of the coat. So I think this is a worthwhile time investment myself. I'm also going to give the axe handle a little edge highlight as well. Then finally a wee storm hose dry rush on all the axe heads just to give it a little bit of edge highlighting. At this stage I think the miniature is starting to come to life and I'm quite enjoying the way it looks. All the boring brown and silver bits are done so we can move on to the kind of more fun parts of the painting process. So just a quick moment to speak about my new cutting mat. I am absolutely in love with it. As you can see, there's now just so much room for activities. You can have elves here, Easterlings here, a wee Balrog up here. Uh, just all this space from a, even some black Numenoreans over here. 
I can just I can just do so much more with this cutting mat. However, as the massive hoarder that I am, I can't help but feel really sad when I get rid of something, even if it's just an inanimate object like a cutting board. You know, I've had that green stuff mat for a decade now and he's been through the wars with me. I can't help but feel a bit sad and sentimental. I'm just gonna take a minute to think about all the good times we've had together over the last decade because there's been so many. Okay, so anyway, it's now time to tackle all the fur and the hair on the miniature. The Bjornings seem to have black and brown hair, which is kind of descended from the different colours of the bears. For this mini, I'm just going to give them black hair, which is the same colour as all the fluffy bits on the gloves and the, the boots and stuff. I'm just going to give them a wee coating of Abaddon black before doing a fine dry brush of a grey. It doesn't matter, any kind of grey you want before dry brushing an even lighter layer of white mixed with grey. Again, it doesn't matter. I would just mix the white into whatever grey you've chosen and slowly highlight up from there. This gives some nice contrast on all the hair and the fur on the miniature. So next up, the coloured shirt. I decided to go with multiple different kind of colours for the shirts for these just to give them a bit of variety. So reds, blues, kind of pastely, kind of dark, rich colours, which is what I've been asked to do by the client. So just going for a base layer of Castellan Green before giving it an all-over wash of a Tonian Camo shade, just to darken it down and make it a bit more matty, while also getting into the recesses and giving some lovely shading. The same thing I see every time I use a wash when I'm painting a miniature, so no surprises there. I then mix Strachan Green 50-50 with the Castellan, give it a little edge highlight. Again, I'm aiming to edge highlight here because of the work I've already done previously. I don't want to destroy it with a dry brush. I then do a really fine edge highlight with the Strachan Green. So now we need to talk about some of the mistakes I've made in this model. As you can see with the edge highlighting, because my, all my brushes are just absolutely gimped, I'm going to have to buy a new set of brushes. Um, all my fine detail ones are just destroyed, so I've not been able to edge highlight properly. And you can see the, they're a bit too big. And there's two ways you can fix these edge highlights. So one of the ways to fix this is to lean into it and just accept that you made the mistake and just go an even lighter colour and do an even finer edge highlight but unfortunately I am not able to do that because as I said all my brushes are absolutely just destroyed so what I'm going to do is just I'm just going to take my original colour so the Stellan Green and just kind of fill in the cover up the, the mistakes that I've made just to make them much nicer nice and fine so they don't look like big splodges and more like actual proper edge highlights. You can also go over this again with uh, the with the wash again 
which I might do just to kind of blend it all together. So now we need to talk about the model itself and it looks very lifeless at the moment and that is because I have not done the face yet. As I always said, faces and bases make the model. So once that's done, you'll see the model transform, hopefully, into the same kind of style as the rest of them. So they should be much nicer. All going well. Another thing I'm going to make sure and do is when I'm doing this face, I'll just show you now. So when I'm doing the face, one thing I always want to do is to just put that little bit of skin under the moustache, just a wee dot, especially if the mouth is closed, just to give it that extra bit of life. I know there's probably not even a bit of skin there, but I just want to do that little dot. I think it looks a lot better. Um, and you can see, even though I've not done any washes or any highlights, the model is starting to look, already look a lot more lifelike because the face has a bit of colour in it. See? And hopefully over the next couple of steps these will really come to life. And my flesh colour is exactly the same recipe as every video. Start with Cadian Flesh, wash with Reichland Flesh Tone and then we slowly add Flayed One Flesh to the Cadian Flesh Tone and just keep highlighting up until we get to a complete 100% Flayed One Flesh. I'm not sure I should be repeating myself every video, but it's just for the new people that are joining. I will admit it is probably an issue of mine that I'm very scared to try new things. Perhaps I should be experimenting with different ways to paint things, but it's just not something I'm that comfortable with. I like to go with what I know, especially when I'm painting a commission because I don't want any unexpected because I'm more than capable of making an arse of things already. So for the base, I was given a photo on what I need to replicate and lucky for me, it was pretty much bang on what I do anyway, minus the black base rim. So I just coated the model in PVA glue before giving it a dunk in Geek Gaming Apache Planes. I rimmed the base with a black to match the photograph and then did my usual and added a bunch of different tufts from Tajima One Miniatures. I'll try and remember to put a link in the description as I've had a few questions and I do apologise, I always forget. I also found these wee orange flowers, I really like the look of them. I can't remember where I got them but I think it adds a nice bit of colour and variety to the miniature. So apart from the mistake with the edge highlight on the jacket, I'm more than happy with the result here. I'm really happy with how it's turned out now that I've got the face and the base done. And I'm now going to add it into the rest of his buddies and show you some other shots. Let me know in the comments what you think. Is there anything you would change about my method? I definitely do think I need to start thinking outside the box a bit because I say the same thing every video and it's getting a bit repetitive. So maybe I need to learn some new techniques. And of course, a big thank you to all the Patreons and my supporters. You really do make this all worthwhile. It means the world to me. Thank you so much. The little community that we're all growing in the Discord is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again. Oh, there he is. Hey guys, Jonathan here from J Max Middle Earth <laughs> <laughs> If you wish to join, there's a wee link in the description and you can come chat with us all in the Discord. And now that I'm done holding myself out, I will leave you with some battle shots. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Thanks for watching everyone, um, don't forget to like and subscribe and remember to give my bell a good old ring. Wow. I just don't understand why my camera's not picking up the light. I'm going to try something. Oh you fucking idiot John, I didn't have it on the brightest setting. It's like my last four videos I've had the light dimmed. Oh, you fucking. Oh my god. Like and subscribe to Jay Mac Army so we Like and subscribe, please. What? <laughs> He's fucking what? Like, uh, what? Should I just put huh? an eye on huh?
Doesn't seem very like Geneva Convention, John. <laughs> so, guys, in this one, uh, fuck. I think that's a new low, even for this channel. Subscribe! <laughs> like and subscribe! Goodbye, my love! Goodbye, my friend! You have been the one! You have been the one for me! Goodbye, my lover! Goodbye, my friend! Let's hope that is not shit.